A very good evening to you and welcome to Eswatini TV's 8 p.m. news broadcast. My name is Nondo Bego Nzapkeluago. Let's take a look at tonight's headlines. The Minister of Agriculture says it is part of the ministry's plan to expand the honeybee industry in the country. Sebenda Director says their learners prefer e-learning. Emla Latini Development Center has unveiled its website and a new logo. We will start our broadcast with a statement from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, together with the Ministry of Health, Eswatini, wish to extend heartfelt and sincere condolences over the passing of a member of the Tanzanian community, the late Gladness Kimaro Eje. In a statement issued by the Ministers of Foreign Affairs and Health, the ministries note with deep concern the hurt and confusion that the subsequent disappearance of the mortal remains of the deceased prior to the interment by her family has caused. Following correspondences between the United Republic of Tanzania and the Kingdom of Eswatini, the ministries find it fitting to reassure all concerned that the appropriate law enforcement agencies are fully seized with the matter, recognizing the gravity and urgency needed to bring it to a satisfactory end. The ministries further plead for cooperation, compassion and full transparency as investigations continue around the sensitive matter that has wide-reaching implications on our local communities as well as our ongoing strong bilateral relations with sister countries on the continent. We will continue with our broadcast. The Minister of Agriculture, Jabulani Mabuza, says it is part of the ministry's plan to expand the honeybee industry and to ensure a sustainable market for honey producers. Mabuza was speaking about the ministry's plans as per government's post-COVID-19 recovery strategy. In the post-recovery strategy post-COVID-19 by government, the Minister of Agriculture aims at expanding the bee industry and making it profitable for beekeepers in the country. The ministry will achieve this by engaging beekeepers. According to last year's report, the country produces about 56,000 tons of honey. We spoke to Mandla Gaines, a beekeeper at Mandabain area, who says their biggest challenge has always been finding a sustainable market. He says currently they sell amongst themselves. Their plea is for the ministry to assist in finding a market and also the containers for bees, which is quite expensive for them. The Minister of Agriculture, Chablan Mabuza, says indeed they have taken it upon themselves to expand the industry. First, they will conduct educational lessons where they will train the farmers on beekeeping and those who want to venture into beekeeping. He says they will also ensure that all communities and all foragings in the country will have beekeepers and be equipped on bee farming. The ministry assures farmers that there is plenty of market available inside and outside our borders. For Eswatini TV News, I'm Kian MCB, Babane. The director of Sebenda National Institute, Dr. Tibegi Lemanana, says the COVID-19 pandemic challenged the education sector to practice e-learning, which learners have shown interest in at their institution. Manana says basic education students appreciated this form of learning since it proved to be convenient for them. Manana was speaking during the World Literacy Day, which is celebrated on the 8th of September. The International Literacy Day 2020 is STEMTH, Literacy, Teaching and Learning in the COVID-19 Crisis and Beyond. The theme mainly focuses on youth and adults' education. Dr. Tibegile Manana says the Sebenda National Institution introduction of e-learning was well received by their students, which is part of the institution's effort of encouraging literacy. They were really excited in accessing this alternative way, uh, just that they were not left uh, uh, behind in these innovative ways for teaching and learning. It was just suitable for each and every learner 
to to to, to learn the managing director of Macmillan Eswatini, Busisi West Melane, says they will continue to come up with programs that will encourage people to read, write and count. We are committed to assisting in raising the literacy levels and we are going to find more partners in that regard. This year alone was very special because the reading skills were much more in demand being under lockdown and um, having to learn in situations which are not normal have really demanded a lot of uh, reading skills and writing skills on the part of students. UNESCO Secretary General Pumzile Shope explains about the role of educators during the time when the world is faced with the COVID-19 pandemic. They have to know the needs of the learners, their weaknesses and their strengths so that they, 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 they channel the right virtual platform to the learner. The Kingdom of Eswatini introduced e-learning to ensure that students continue to learn, which is in line with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal Number 4 that encourages quality education. Eswatini, Tevinyo Sondom Langeni, with Kianim Sibi in Babanem. We will now take a look at the COVID-19 update from the Ministry of Health. The Ministry of Health has reported 20 new confirmed COVID-19 cases in the country in the last 24 hours. In a statement issued by the Minister for Health, Li Zingosi, a total of 308 results were received today, out of which 20 tested positive for coronavirus, bringing the total number of confirmed cases in the country to 4,904. The Ministry has also reported two new deaths in the last 24 hours, bringing the total number of deaths to 96. The statement shows that there are 729 active cases, 4,059 have recovered, 96 are deceased and 20 have been registered for care. Looking at the cumulative confirmed COVID-19 cases by region, Mandini region has 2,241 cases, Lower region has 1,894 cases, Shiseloni region has 411 cases and the Lubomba region has 358 cases confirmed of coronavirus. Let's continue with the news. The veterinary department in the Ministry of Agriculture says it is important for animal owners in the country to ensure that their pets are protected and free from diseases at all times. This was said by the Director of Veterinary Services, Dr. Tolani Lamini, when speaking about the importance of the month of September being the time to have pets vaccinated in the country and in countries around the world. The Director of Veterinary Services in the Ministry of Agriculture, Dr. Kolani Lamini, urges all Emaswati or animal owners to take their pets to the nearest clinics for vaccination to prevent them from acquiring the rabies disease which will cause harm and also be a threat to humans. Dr. Lamini says during the last day of the month they will start their campaign of vaccinating animals in the different areas in the country. In, in September we vaccinate all the dogs in the country and the vaccination is fully sponsored and conducted by government. Um, of course, with the help of the public who present their dogs for vaccination. Uh, this year's uh, theme for the rapist day is vaccinate to eliminate, vaccinate to eliminate. It is not difficult to note that uh, it may, it is obvious that this year is a bit different because of the COVID situation which means uh, we will be limited in terms of resources and in terms of, you know, the situation to get to communities. And, um, however, that, that should not really stop them, their country from uh, its obligation to vaccinate the dog population and protect the citizens. The manager of Eswatini Animal Welfare, Ngosing Pile Lamini, says people in the country should work together in ensuring animals are well and healthy as it is not easy to cure the rabies disease. Si awa kele maswa tatichi ofi sele tiluwa ne ngoba ira ipisi iya bulala, ay bulali siluwa ne pela ne muntu waze watfola le rabies uya hamba en tlabeni. The ministry says the maswati should be vigilant and ensure the wellness of the animals to prevent the spread of other diseases, especially during this period of the COVID-19 disease in the country. For Eswatini TV News, I'm Temalangen Lamini Utmuzim Konda in Babane. 
Emla Ladini Development Center has unveiled its website and a new logo which will assist learners and other stakeholders to easily access courses offered by the institution. The website and logo were presented by the institution's principal, Glenn Mazibugo, in an event that was held at the Happy Valley Hotel in Ezulwini. Emla Ladini Development Center has presented its new logo and website where learners and the nation at large can get to know about the courses being offered at the institution. Emla Ladini aims at changing the perception that they are an upgrading center but rather a school. Presenting the website and logo was the principal of Emla Ladini, Glenn Mazibogo, who says they have come a long way. Does this change? These two advancements uh, uh, that we're launching today the new logo and the website are very key in, in, in advancing our, our, um, our, our mandate. Uh, uh, let me dwell on the website. Uh, the website, it has been found that as we want to launch and to go into digital learning programs and modules, that cannot be done if we don't have a website that will be a base which will uh, accommodate all, 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 all our, um, our digital uh, uh, courses. So the website is going to help us to be able to reach uh, and that all learners can be able to reach uh, uh, Mla Latine. And in fact, the background towards these developments is uh, when we are analyzing our student performance, we realize that uh, uh, the performance is not as good as we would like it to be. On the website, courses offered are visibly available and there are options of blended and e-learning for learners. For Eswatini TV News, I'm KNMCV at the Happy Valley, Ezulwini. The acting vice president of the Southern African Broadcasting Association, MNEDC Maisela, has congratulated Stanley Smilo on his reappointment as the director general of the Namibian Broadcasting Corporation for the next five years. On behalf of Esotini Television Authority, the board of directors of the Southern African Broadcasting Association and the SAPA Secretariat, the acting vice president of the Southern African Broadcasting Association, Mnadis Maisela, is also the acting chief executive officer of a certain television authority, has congratulated Mr. Stanley Similo on his reappointment as the Namibian Broadcasting Corporation director general for another five years. Maisela says that decision to extend Similar term of office with another five years is highly appreciated by the Sapa family as it echoes their resolution at the 26th Sapa HM in Livingston, Zambia in 2019 to retain Similo as president of the association for another term. The acting vice president says the decision by the NPC board of directors could not have come at a better time as their mandate to promote quality broadcasting by enhancing professionalism and credibility of public service broadcasting in SADAC has appeared to be well on course with stimulus guidance, especially before the unfortunate disturbance by the sudden and abrupt outbreak of COVID-19. Maisela says stimulus day at the NPC and SAPA by extension gives them the assurance that he will continue to play a pivotal role in fulfilling their mandate by investing his time and effort into different projects like the expansion and launching of the SADAC TV news program Eyes on SADAC, the initiation and launching of the SADAC TV channel which planning Similo has steered, directed and supported. Maisela says he's certain that Similo's extended term of office gives him more time to influence the strategic direction of the media industry in Southern Africa as it helps shape a better future for all in the region. The acting vice president says the office of the VC under the able guidance of Mr. Bongane Austin Lamini, the incumbent CEO of Eswatin Television Authority, will always assist a good cause under Similo's watch. For certain TV news, I'm LinkedIn Gule, visual source from Saba. 
Lamkapi headman Mandla Mavusom has asked for people to restrain themselves and not take the law into their hands. This follows the shooting of three people after an alleged land dispute between the Lamkapi and Luyengani chiefdoms on Monday. The suspect in the matter is former Minister of Public Works and Transport Ntutugo Lamini. Police were found stationed at Mslabubovu area on Tuesday where two people were shot dead while one is still in hospital. The three were allegedly shot by former Minister of Public Works and Transport in Tutugo Lamini. The police included those from the Operations Support Service Unit. We spoke to Lamkapi headman Mandla Mavuso who said the issue of the shooting has been reported to regional authorities. Mavuso said Lamkapi traditional authorities will meet and forge a way forward on the matter. But long or taking a list at Sas Baslana and Enchung Wool. Now, Boba the Matam Bengo and Rutsi Logun just an upset as a pexep. Mavuso says traditional authorities are yet to meet over the matter on Wednesday. He also says people should restrain themselves and not take the law into their own hands. He further asked police to be extra vigilant as the matter should not get out of hand. Attempts to get comments from the Luyengweni chief Lembelele Lamini were fruitless. The chief said the matter has to be reported to the right authorities and thus cannot be addressed in the media. Meanwhile, the accused in the matter was expected to appear before court today, but that had not happened at the time of compiling this report. The suspect faces two charges of murder and one of attempted murder. For Swatini TV News, Temgos Mavimbela, Lamkapi. The Swaziland Action Group Against Abuse has reported that this week marks the end of the Leave No One Behind project which has started to prevent the spread of abuse in the kingdom. This was said by the Swaziland Action Group Against Abuse Director Nonlantla Mzlamini. The Swaziland Action Group Against Abuse Leave No One Behind program, which is meant to educate and prevent abuse, especially with people living with disabilities and refugees, is at the last stage. The director, Nontlantla Lamini, says they have been able to reach out to the different constituencies in the country, whereby they have placed clubs that will ensure people are made aware and assisted in matters of abuse. Lamini says with this initiative, they hope abuse statistics will reduce in the country. The project is that the project is that we have visited numerous places and communities to educate people on the matters of abuse in the Lubamba region. And these people will ensure that the process goes well as they understand their communities better than anyone. They will be able to identify those living with disabilities and those in the refugee camp for counseling. We hope that this project will be successful as we continue to other regions in the country. The United Nations in 2014 reported that globally 1 billion children aged 2 to 17 years experienced different kinds of abuse and physical violence. For Eswatini TV News, I'm Demalang Inshamini with Gyanim Sibi in Manzini. The Eswatini National Trust Commission has declared Sibebe Rock site in Gweni community as a heritage site. According to the ENTC acting CEO, Hlopsiles Kosana, the area is of historic value since it has historic caves, rock art, and archaeological material amongst other values. The Ngweni area in the outskirts of Mbabane has the second largest rock in the world which attracts people from all over the world. A nature conservancy area has been identified in the same community. ENTC acting CEO Hlopsile Sikosana says the cooperation between two chiefdoms, Mtsimba and Langeni chiefdoms, has made it possible for ENTC to identify this area. Uh, that site is, is quite uh, very uh, sinister for us. It has scientific value in the sense that it can be used for researchers and students on geology, history and geography lessons. 
It also has historic value. It has MR caves and rock arts that comes from ancient times when people were still uh, living uh, in, in, in harmony with nature. It also has aesthetic, aesthetic value in that it has some molten volcanic magma, which is very fascinating and provide a very good view. And it also has uh, some economic value in the sense that it can be useful as an ecotourism site. Sikusana also explained how far they have gone in securing the area. The first thing that you have to do is to secure the site so that the cattle cannot go there and degrade and there is not over usage and, uh, um, of the natural resources and you limit any disturbance that can occur in the area. Having this area listed in the World Heritage Listing will benefit the country as it will be marketed globally to the tourism industry by the World Heritage Center. The Sibebe Rock site will be the first heritage site to be listed in the World Heritage List in the country. For Iswatini TV News, Sundom Langeni, pictures sourced from ENTC website. Members of the school committee at Tatawene Primary School have met with parents to discuss ways of resolving the challenges faced by their children, such as the increasing number of pupils who have shifted their attention to working in Daha fields. The school principal, Ngamsi Lematenja, says this habit has reached a point where some pupils bring weapons to school. Parents of Sitatawene Primary School people say they are having difficulty dealing with their children because they think they have shifted their focus to growing darker instead of their studies. Parents say pupils are way out of hand. We as parents cannot keep leash of our children. We are the ones who let them do as they please because at the end of the day, children come back with the benefits and we enjoy them as a family, not minding that the child's future is no more. Our children no longer listen to us. We try to ensure they study, but they always have excuses. Sisatawaini Primary School Principal Ngamsile Matsenjo says, some children seem to be using school as a place where they can buy and sell daka. She says things have gotten out of hand to an extent that some pupils carry daka in their backpacks while some of them have resorted to bringing weapons to school. <laughs> I'll urge parents whose children have fallen pregnant to encourage their children to go back to school as government has issued a directive that schools accept pregnant girls. Police officers in the Lubombo region COVID-19 task team recently committed themselves to assisting the school deal with such criminal behavior. Reporting for Eswatini TV News, is Tembeli Lema Kocha with Temba Shabangu at Tatsaweni. Let's take a look at our sports news. Secretary of the Swatini Hockey Association, Prosper Tole, says the association will soon be implementing development programs in all four regions of the country in a bid to grow the sport. Stole says the outbreak of the coronavirus has delayed some programs that already had been lined up. He was speaking in an interview with the Swatini TV sports journalist in Mbabane. Hockey is still one of the less popular sports in the country and the association for now only hosts school tournaments. The association says they understand that they are still an up-and-coming association but they have great programs that they have lined up that will make the sport grow. The association secretary Prosper Toller says they will be taking the sport to communities and coronavirus outbreak has delayed some of their programs. We've got outreach programs we have lined up to get into each and every community we have out there. 
So um, we try and we will go to as soon as everything we've got the go ahead from the government. We want to be out in the communities doing our outreach programs. It's it's been awesome because uh, it's really gr growing by leaps and bounds. Because uh, we had uh, about four schools in the primary schools and four schools in the high schools, and those numbers have grown. In the in the primary schools, we now have about eight schools participating in local tournaments. High schools, we now have about six to seven schools participating, and you can tell that the. The kids are really interested in the sport and the talent is really there. We just need to tap more into it. Stole says they will be attending regional qualifiers for African competitions in Zimbabwe and he's pleading for help from corporate companies in the country to support them financially. Reporting for Eswatini TV Sport News, I am Patizum Sebi Mbabane. We've come to the end of our bulletin, but before we wrap up, let's take a quick recap of the headlines. The Minister of Agriculture says it is part of the ministry's plan to expand the honeybee industry in the country. Sebenda Director says their learners prefer e-learning. Emla Ladini Development Center has unveiled its website and a new logo. Eswatini, that is all the news we had for you tonight. Up next is the weather forecast. Good night and God bless.